But yes, <clears throat> hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God, Woo! my God, my God, my God, what a day, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, my Lord, glory to God, glory to God, yes, <laughs> Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just praise you. We give you glory and we give you honor this morning, Father, because you are magnificent. Woo! Ah, Lord God, I lift you up today. Father God, that you give me health and strength, Lord God. We have had our challenges, but Father, we are victorious this morning. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord Jesus. We are victorious this morning. Father, today is Wisdom Day. Amen. Today is a Wisdom Day. Amen. It was supposed to be Wisdom Week, but uh, we missed out on a couple of days. Tomorrow morning, remember, tomorrow morning is our Friday healing time. Amen. And, uh, you know, there was a friend of mine, Gwen Omquist, <clears throat> that whenever things would be going on with her, physically in her body, she would never say, I'm sick. She would say, I'm taking a healing. Amen. Her confession was always from the positive perspective, I'm taking my healing. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Well, I am uh, Bishop Winston Watson. You see my shirt on today. Amen. Serve Jamaica. Amen. Um, we are here to serve. We are here to be a blessing. But this morning, I want to give you some wisdom in some areas, <clears throat> at least one area anyway. I want to give you an ability to, to think through some things um, as God has led me through some things. I don't know how many of you have seen some of the pictures I've posted, and I probably have a few hundred more to post, amen? But uh, in posting those pictures, maybe about 200 or so pictures over the last um, week or so, I've realized something. I've been through a heck of a lot. <laughs> the Lord has carried me through some mighty, mighty, mighty things. He has blessed me immensely. He has encouraged me and when, and by the way, that doesn't mean that I didn't have challenges because if I tell you, you know, you see the pictures and you see maybe the nice side of things, but there's always a back end to it, amen, that could have been devastating nevertheless, nevertheless, and somebody would say, but God, but God, ah, intervened and God's intervention depends on you and I. God's intervention and God's answers depend on you and I, on you and I. And so when we are wise enough <clears throat> to understand that, then we really, we really get into the arena of blessing. I want you to join me this morning as we get into a worship song here. Um, just enjoy it, and we will be right back after the song. Glory to God in some earth, goodwill towards all men. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Where wisdom stands above all else, please guard your heart, for out of your heart flow the issues of life. matters how you spend your time. There is a path that leads to life. I'm Meditate on God's word in the day, in the night. You'll know blessings of every kind. Like a tree planted by water, shall you be son, daughter? Like a 
victory planted by water Yours every day, miracles in Jesus' name. Do what is good, do what is right. Flee from evil with all your might. Guard your ears and guard your eyes. challenge I had yesterday. <laughs> uh, you know, there, it's interesting that it's something that I normally, um, lo I love Milo, and uh, I normally have it hot. And yesterday morning, around three o'clock in, in the middle of the morning, you know, I, you know, I've been getting up and I've been having at least 10 to 15 minutes prayer in each watch window. And so I got up in my just before the window and uh, at 3 a.m. <clears throat> and went to the refrigerator and got out my nice ice cold Milo and I'm ready to go. And I drank it. One hour after that, <clears throat> I had my challenge, amen? <laughs> but anyway, I learned uh, one of my former members in church in Kingston, who now lives in the U.S., sent me a note and told me, actually commented on my Facebook post that she is very familiar with that problem <laughs> also. 
and gave me some pointers on that. So it wasn't a virus or anything like that. You know, it was just me having something that I probably shouldn't have had at that time of the morning and then having it ice cold on top of it. God, and we thank God for what he has done. You know, um, many of us, many of us, uh, oh, before I do that, I I'd like you to pray this morning for um, Satasha, who is not feeling so well. I put her on my list this morning. As I was sitting there getting ready um, for Morning Prayer Live, I was putting different names on the list. And so the first name I put on the list was Satasha. <laughs> I put it on, you know, primarily for her business, for prayer, but then uh, I saw a note from her that, you know, she's not feeling so well. So we pray for Satasha this morning, and we thank God <clears throat> that her physical body conforms to the Word of God, and uh, we thank God this morning that all things work together for her good, in the mighty name of Jesus. Kenesha tells me many times, when I don't feel so well, um, she reminds me that usually my not feeling well is either just before or just after certain things that I teach her. Is <laughs> that you can tell. Um, I don't know if you have noticed this, and thank God it hasn't happened recently. I just thank God. Well, whenever I'm going out to minister, and uh, I go, to, especially in a prayer session or a healing session anywhere on the island, I, I immediately, just about almost immediately get attacked in my voice. <clears throat> and I have to deal with that voice issue for quite a while. At the point, I totally lost my voice. And it's not until I got on the platform that my voice came back. And when I finished um, speaking and praying and doing all of those things, then the voice went away again. <laughs> so I could tell that it was nothing but an attack of the enemy. Amen? Uh, but this morning, I want us to turn. You see it on the screen. Psalm 1. The first psalm. Uh, many of us, uh, we would... And, and I, let me tell you what happens to me. And, and I'm sure you have experienced the same thing. Um, I wanted to start a company, talking about wisdom now, I, I, I wanted to start a company because we were getting laid off in Tulsa um, with Memorex Telex. I was one of their senior managers there, <clears throat> and I laid off my about 16 members. And now it was my turn to get laid We had, you know, we knew they had informed us, uh, and uh, in doing, you know, I was thinking, uh, what kind of business can I do? I'm, you know, what am I supposed to work on? You know, should I start this? Should I start three things? Three things. Uh, a company that was selling. Um, like somewhat like franchises, where you could do uh, searches for college students and things, and, uh, and things like that for college students. And so I started that. <coughs> that came about. They were. Something came up, and then finally. I'm thinking about starting a company and about doing that, but I had to do that within our organization, Memory Excelix, many times, train people in how to use software, train people in how to use word processing, like Microsoft Word and Excel, and I, I was always doing that. The Lord just started that. So I started three companies. <coughs> See, not four, three companies. You know, um, uh, just about at the same time, and uh, before I left Memorex, and so I was downstairs. The building was was my office that I used for a while. You know, in having clients come in and talking with them and doing research for them and so on, and then giving them reports. Well. I said, 
Which one? The, the building, uh, I secured an office space for the computer training facility that I had wanted to, wanted to do. I secured the office. I, I bought maybe, you know, I think about four computers that was set up. I had these other two things going at the same time. And so I said, Lord, which one? Never specifically answered me, but he did answer me in a general sense. The Lord said, the one that prospers. <laughs> and it was interesting. Because I'd never heard <coughs> anybody teach from that perspective. So I said, Lord, and you know, we can talk to the Lord. I said, Lord, why don't you show me in the scripture where there is a premise for that kind of wisdom? Show me in the Bible. Brother Hagen always told us that if any angel or, or even somebody that looks like Jesus himself comes and says something to you, before you run with what that thing says, you better ask, is it in the scriptures? And ask that individual or that spirit or that you can the Lord and Samuel <laughs> and he began to show me that when Samuel went to find Saul Saul was not I mean when Samuel went to find he was not a, a precise act it was not an act of precision. It was not a search of precision. And so the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and none of them, as far as the spirit of Samuel with God's encounter, none of them um, witnessed with his spirit that this was would be. After he got to the last one, he said, so God, and I wonder probably, probably in his mind, he said, God, I miss it now. I, I don't know. <clears throat> Something is wrong here because you told me to come here. You told me the new king. You have. So what's going on? I think I've missed it. I went to the wrong address. I heard the wrong name. You see, God's wisdom sometimes is not so obvious to our natural mind because in thinking that it has to be this one because I'm sure <clears throat> he went to the oldest one first then maybe that one was rejected he went to another one he went to the one that had more academic um, qualities and then he kept going through the list and, hey, ain't nobody here. You know, and God is knocking on his head. Hey, Samuel. And, and it says, God does not judge by the physical appearance. He does not judge by his eyes nor by his ears. He judges by his spirit. And so eventually, you know what happened. Um, uh, Jesse was asked, do you have another child? And the other child obviously was David. And so, so when the Lord shared that with me, the business actually consulting services. Um, and facility consulting and the um, the working with the college planning. <clears throat> Those three things were interesting, but it was the training coming together that really prospered. And uh, and you and I have to begin to really work a simplicity of understanding. I want us to read something. The the first psalm. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Thank you, Father. 
Uh, I say thank you, Father, because the Spirit of God just said, stop for a moment. To you. Um, I, I'm not unique. Let me point this out, though. I am unique in the sense that I aggressively, consistently, and constantly prayed of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> if there's one thing that Rhema Bible College puts into you, is the fact that you ought to pray in the Spirit. And so I constantly and consistently prayed. Praying in the Spirit, one of my um, friends, and he ministered over in the Ukraine, he made a statement. He said that in the Spirit, um, he would sit at his station, he was a night watchman, and he would do his homework and so on, but he would pray in the Holy Ghost. He sat and prayed in the Holy Ghost, he could see himself moving into the Ukraine. He could see himself preaching in the Ukraine. He could see himself starting churches in the Ukraine. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, Began. As we, what are we doing? We are moving into our destiny. <clears throat> and in our spirit man, we step into our tomorrow. In our spirit man, we step into our promise. In our spirit man, we step into our covenant. Um, in our spirit man, we begin to experience the very things that will be in our tomorrow, but we begin to see them today with what? With God's ability to step into an atmosphere of all knowledge. Amen? And it's incredible because the wisdom of God gives us the instructions to do that. He enables us to do that by praying in the Holy Ghost, my God. It's not just to feel who's bonk. Ah, I let people hear you, and it sounds good, and it sounds rhythmic, and it sounds that. It is a key into your destiny. It is a key into your ability to step into your success. It is a key in your preparation advantage of opportunity at the crossroads of life. Um, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I did not go, the Apostle Paul said it too, I did not go to anybody and ask them, should I start this or should I do that? Or I, I actually what I'm doing. I I am not. That's different from you. If the Lord spoke to me, He'll speak to you. Amen. And then the next thing that I did, the, one of the reasons why I believe the Lord wants me to share this is that there are people what. As far as, far as entrepreneurial experiences, what on earth can I do to earn some money? I said to um, one of our youngsters that runs a business here for us in Port Maria, I said to him, I uh, guess me, I said, I want you to sit down, you think unity. you and seeing what what you can do to generate greater income and so a few days after the first day I asked him so have you been have you been thinking of opportunities he says well and he begins to look at these grandiose things you know to spend five million over here or ten million over there I said no 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 or no. I spoke have you found any opportunities? And he came back with some of the same things that he spoke with this group. And, uh, you know, they're saying, well, that's too expensive, that's too demanding, that's too... 
thinking way beyond your capacity, right? In the dreams, yeah, are. I start another Microsoft. I started a, a training company and I began to write my own curriculums and things like that. I bought four. It was two tables <laughs> in a room and I started things. I, it didn't take me $10 million in Jamaican currency to do it. It took me just a few dollars that I had saved and I worked through it one step. So, but our take time to listen. Listen to what he said. And that was long. Next, I business company and U.S. dollar budget. I had 16 members of staff. I had supervisors. I had and vice presidents and so on. I worked and I managed and I led. And well, I never. And so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to incorporate. I didn't know any of those. So, turn remember. Um, other than I knew his name, and so I may I walk over to we call it Mahogany Row. That was where all the mahogany furniture and walls and things were. Where all of the fancy offices were, the, the executives. <clears throat> and so I went down Mahogany Row and I knocked on his door. I says, um, "Let's say his name was John." I said, "John, I need to talk with you for a few minutes." Um, do a certain kind of company, but I don't know any corporations, I don't know anything about starting a company, I don't know anything about budgeting, I don't, in, that, in the sense of my own company, I know that we have a big budget on our computer system and I plug in my stuff and I do that, but when it comes to doing something, I don't know. He's other I want you to I, this was a white guy, an older white gentleman, and I was this little black kid <laughs> who goes into this white guy's office and says, I need help. And let me tell you something. That's why I cannot understand what America is like today. I cannot understand the challenges you know, that are going on in the lives today. This man sat in home and talked with me. And once a week, I went into, into, into his office and he began to share, me, share with me about corporate structures. He began to share with me how I incorporate a company. He began to share with me, you know, score, the society, um, the, I think it was the society of, um, or, or retired executives that I could go in and I could meet with them and they had seminars and I could work with them and they would help me. So I went to score meetings and I got diplomas. <clears throat> and like in Jamaica where you have Heart Trust, NTA, they had an organization similar to that, that uh, but it, it was geared to people who wanted to start their companies and do certain things, develop business plans and so on. And he connected me and began to mentor me in doing this, and I started. The wisdom of God to say, hey, I'm going to go talk with him. And then I said to him, and I said it to several others, <clears throat> I don't know how to do this. And they knew I didn't know how to do it, but I said, can I help you? Can I come sit with you, you know, as this particular um, skill set that you have is something I'm not familiar with. Can I come sit with you? You don't have to pay me, you don't have to, you don't have to give me lunch, you don't have to give me dinner. Can I just come sit with you? Can I just follow you around and watch you? Can I, can I, 
people. I sat with people. I went and visited with people. And I didn't sit there and just take up their time. I went there to help them do what they did. And let me tell you something, my friend. For the sky to drop, and we won't move, and we won't do anything because we are waiting for a handout and not wanting to raise a hand. Amen. To help somebody. And I tell people all the time: you want to learn something, volunteer your time. You want to know something, make the effort to get into. It. You you want to learn about law? You know, go say. I know I need money. I know. But right now, for the next month, can I just come volunteer in your office? I, I, I you know, I it's kind of you know, beg, beg and borrow from mommy and daddy and uncle and pastor, and get to the get to nursing. You know, hey, infirmary, can I volunteer? Hey, municipal government, I know. You know, you have need for certain things. You can't hire everybody. Can I just come in and volunteer my time? But everybody wants to get paid, but you learn sometimes very little in that paid position versus when you get in there and you say, I need I need to just give you some of my time. And you, you've seen the several hundred pictures. Most of those things, because Walk it not in the counsel of the ungodly. I didn't go around and to ask. I didn't go around what, you know, what, as far as uh, some, you know, wonderful message and, you know, this is the way you ought to do it and this is little snippets of videos and so on. What, let's treat or sit us in the seat of the scornful. What did I do? I delighted in the law of the Lord. I, if you look at this shirt, the first word on the top, it might be turned around with you, but the first word on the top says, Sir. And I purpose to put it on this morning. And he just says, The color is all around. And the word, it said, It says, what? Well, you begin. A part of your wisdom in from serving. One of my youngsters last night just texting back back and forth, <clears throat> and he was having a few things him, to him, and he responded, "Well, I learned why because there was something that, that was released in released." And then now he knows how to handle the particular situation. We can't stand around in sinners' ways and talk with them and enjoy their company and take their advice. Sometimes it's not bad advice. Most of the times it's not going to be. Nor sit us in the way or in the seat of the scornful. Man, you can't listen to. If you would, you don't know. Pastor, if only I had listened to you when you spoke to me. It says in verse 2, though, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. What do I mean by that? Or what does the word mean by that? <clears throat> I go to church. I, can't, I, I make sure I take time. If... if like now, I don't go into a you know a large gathering. I take time. On the time out to enjoy the take time out to truly self. Greater manifestation of wisdom comes. <clears throat> Whenever 
I would, um, one, I'm ready to take an exam. You know, um, I would see people, um, you know, around me. My God, I don't know. I had to work. Uh, uh, at certain points, I had to work, uh, you know, multiple jobs at one point. Then I had the different businesses that I was working on. Then I had, uh, you know, different other things that I was doing. And then I would have exams to do. I didn't have time to study. You know, like I saw other people could dedicate 10 hours and three hours and two hours to study. What I had to do was, as I, as I was dealing with material, I spoke to, I said, God, embellish it in me. Lord, um, just let it rest in me, indelibly imprint it in me. And then I can, as I go into an exam room, bring it, what does the 119th Psalm say? A, a, a youngster in, in, in college with me said it one day to me, and I've never forgotten it. He said, this Psalm, I forget one verse, what verse, but it's a long psalm. And it says, I know more than my instructors. I know more than my teachers. And the reason the psalmist says that is because he had the ability to tap into the wisdom of heaven. <laughs> what a difference, amen? He had the natural ability to tap in to what he learned in the classroom and he learned in life, but he had a unique ability to tap into the wisdom of God. As long as you do what you need to do. It says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. What does that mean? It means that you once you put yourself in the right place with God, you will need not worry about the sustaining presence of Jehovah Jireh. Water will be there. Fruit will be there. Because, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Here is an important point with that verse. You bring forth your fruit, not my fruit. You bring forth your fruit in your season, not my season. And so if you begin to be anxious that Pastor Watson is doing it, and you're not doing it, if you begin to say, oh, well, my neighbor is doing it, but I'm not doing it. My neighbor is, is being blessed in this way, but I'm not. Maybe it's just not yet your season. But your season will come. But you must also walk with God's perseverance in godly wisdom and applying yourself in the word daily, praying daily, taking time to walk in godly wisdom. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You see, when your leaf withers many times, it means that your tree, your plant, is not prospering, that inside something is wrong, and it's dying from the outside. But no, 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 no. You are going to be fulfilling your godly and life. Godly, it says in verse 4, not so. The wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. What am I trying to say? I want you, if, if you are in business or you're wanting to be in business, you have some ideas that you want to do. Um, my, um, my wife at one time, um, we were talking about going on the radio. <clears throat> and I said to her, well, I have friends at the radio station. This is in Tulsa. I have friends at the radio station, and so what I plan to do is I'm, I'm going to go into their studio, we're going to record the programs, and we're going to just broadcast them from that place. Well, one afternoon I came in, at that point, by the way, so you know, I had just been laid off, so there is no money coming in. We had received, you know, a lump sum payment, and, uh, and uh, then they were going to give us some severance after that. Uh, but we really had, I had no job, and so I had to also then exercise wisdom in how, you know, we would erode money. <laughs> and so I said, let's go into the studio, let's do this in the studio. And uh, 
I came home one afternoon and my office was filled with about two to three thousand US dollars worth of electronic equipment for a studio. I went ballistic because I said, first of all, we don't know how to use this. What a waste of money. And I really told her that she had to take it right, everything had to be taken right back to the store because it was not wise to do something like that. If we are going to start something, let us start within the context of, our, of what we are able to do, one, financially, and do with wisdom, because it might not be the thing that God wants us to do. So let's start small and let's build from there. And so it turns out, by the way, that that was never the thing that the Lord wanted us to do in the first place. And we would have wasted somewhere never useful to us. And so start out in the context of your ability. $10,000 worth of it. If you can accumulate $100,000 worth of it. Begin to begin to dream, but begin to work on some small ideas. Begin to package a little this and package some of that. Begin to sew this or in those brand that grandiose dreams. But the real dream is typically something that's small that eventually becomes large. It usually is something that's like a seed, that mustard seed of faith that begins to grow and then begins to manifest. <clears throat> My friends, you can go to the bank and you can borrow 10 million. Somebody said that um, to us as a group many, um, a couple of years ago, and he wanted to go and borrow a few million dollars and put a group of the young people in debt. things within the context of their ability because because of the certain things you, you have to weigh the pros and cons you have to weigh the cost benefit of things and you have to exercise godly wisdom in the things you do whatever it is that's in your heart getting ready to start her business Natasha step at a time she's working through things one day at a time She's working through things one opportunity at a time. But many of us want, many of us want a lightning bolt of success. And it does not come that way. In the step. I. <coughs> of olive oil at a time one bottle of perfume at a time. There's one young lady in Port Maria that she's doing, making lipstick. There's a young man <clears throat> in um, he <laughs> selling wigs. Why? Because he saw a need in the community. And then he's doing this, went out and he bought different little things and he's helping himself. But but he did not open some big store, what he's doing. He's doing some, you know, um, a storefront online, and he's using that opportunity as much as possible. He's using, you know, the, the social media platform. Use it. It is important. You don't know how difficult it is for me to tell people that you don't have to always buy time on radio. You don't have to always buy time on television. Why don't you use, and I, for years I've been saying this, use your electronic media. Send out, I used to send out faxes. I got everybody that I knew, I got their fax number, and I would send out faxes. I got everybody's email, and I would send them emails. I got everybody's text. When I came to Jamaica, I realized everybody had a phone, a cell phone, just about. And so I got their phone numbers, and I wrote a computer program that we were able to send texts from the church ahead of all of the fancy things that people have today. Ahead of that, it was what well, over 10 years ago, we were sending out texts from our computer systems to our church members. We were doing tremendous things ahead of time, ahead of the curve, because of godly wisdom. 
He can do that for you. He can open your mind to things that are needed in your community. He can open your mind to things that are needed online. He can open your mind to opportunities that are right in front of your face, but you are blinded by a grandiose dream. You're blinded by the bigness of something. What you need to do is come down off of that. You need to come down and you need to begin to talk to God. You need to come down and you need to really begin to look at the small things that will eventually be the big thing. And then one of these days, you won't have one company, but you may have 10 companies. You won't have one opportunity, but you may have five opportunities. Amen? You may have so much more than you dream of today, but you will have to learn how to do things within the wisdom and in the context of what God wants you to do and not what you are thinking. Amen? So I pray for you today. Father, I thank you for granting wisdom to those that hear me. I thank you for granting wisdom and understanding. Ah, yes, Father. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> There's a youngster that um, he went to high school, he went to um, different academies, he got certifications in a number of business areas, and he went out, he said he got CXCs and CSECs and whatever they call the exams and the certificates they have here in Jamaica. He was eminently qualified for a job in corporate Jamaica. And he went to this place and couldn't get a job, and he went to that place and he couldn't get a job. He was being interviewed a few days ago, and he said the thing, I want to tell you what he does now. He said the thing that you do, talking to the interviewer, when you go to your job at 9 to 5, I go to my job at 9 to 5. And you know what he was doing? He was now a farmer, because he realized, he says, his part was always to work with animals and plant things and so they were showing his farm. He had melons and peppers and pigs and goats and uh, he said, I get up every morning. He, he, he had a broken hand one time and he was out there, you know, scrubbing out the pig pen. Yeah, and people would wonder, how come this kid now has, you know, 20 pigs? How come he now has 40 goats, uh, you know, how come he now has, you know, a watermelon, you know, farm? How come all of this is now his? He said he started out with one pig. He said he started out with one goat. He said, and then he began to breed the different animals, and he's now where he is. And people would envy him for that, and people would wonder, hey, no, I need to start out with 40 goats. I need to start out with 40 pigs. No, my friend, like that young man. And he's still a youngster. He's probably in his early 20s. And he said he was 21 or 22. Um, he learned within the means of his capacity, he learned how to work, work the work of Christ. And he said it. He said, because there are people that are stealing his goats and stealing things from him. And he said, all, he, all he'll do is leave it to the Almighty. He was subscribing to faith in God and saying that God had helped him to do what he did, to start what he started, and God has helped him to grow what he has grown. It is amazing what we can do with what we have. It is amazing what we can do when we get into the right perspective. It is amazing what we can do as business people. You know, not everybody is going to be a farmer, obviously. Not everybody is going to be, you know, um, working in the field like that. Some of you will be in business, in, in, you know, in a hotel industry or in the tourist industry. Some of you will be in other industries. But there is nothing like your own business. And there is an opportunity for you. Why don't you find it? Why don't you talk to God? Why don't you begin to sit with the Holy Spirit and begin to brainstorm? Amen? Begin to think through the things that God will... And when you ask Him, He's going to begin to bombard you with opportunity. He's going to begin to bombard you with ideas. He's going to begin to help you. And then you step into your destiny. Pray in the Spirit, my friend. I pray over your life today that truly God will lead you and guide you. I pray over your life today that the opportunities, when I'm gone from this earth, when I'm no longer around, 
you will look back on a day like this and a message like this on YouTube and you will say, thank God that I listened because now I am CEO of four different companies. I have subsidiaries under me. Amen. I have opportunities. I, you know, I export to the United States. I export to the Caribbean Islands. I do this and I do that all because I listened to Bishop Watson one morning as he said, begin where you are. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And remember tomorrow is Healing Friday. We'll see you then. Amen. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God.
You'll bear fruit in season. You'll prosper like a tree planted by water.